start on this computer. Okie doke. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, hope everybody had a good, uh, a good weekend. Um, today, I want to cover lesson four. Um, on Wednesday, I will cover lesson six. We will come back to lesson five next week. But at the end of the week, um, what I wanted to do is to make sure that um, you guys were up to speed so that you would feel comfortable starting the first assignment, which will be the postcard assignment. And that's kind of what we're working on today. I'm going to keep it open ended. Um, in the past, I did, I, you know, made it a selfie photo bomb, but I just want it. This is really just taking a minimum of four different images and incorporating some type and combining them into a, a, an image that you think is unique and interesting. So we'll talk about that more on Wednesday um, as well as next week. But anyway, um, this is the postcard assignment. And the topic for this particular uh, lesson is layers. Layers was introduced a long time ago um, in version three of Photoshop. So it wasn't in the original couple versions. Um, and when it came out, it was a big deal. And it continues to be a big deal. Um, it's used all the time. And if you can't see the layers that well, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drag them over here and I'm gonna have to move them around from place to place, just so you can see. Let's look at the finished version over to the left. You can see they got a lot of layers going on here where every separate element is isolated and they have <clears throat> um, applied some layer effects to some of them. They've applied some adjustment layers to some of them. And that's what we're gonna do to all of these. So you can, you know, work in a very non-destructive way. That's the whole point of this is that um, I can go back and I can edit any element without having to start all over again. And that was the case many years ago, even after layers were developed. But adjustment layers weren't, they were non they were destructive. And so you could apply uh, an adjustment layer to your layer and it, you know, it was, um, it was permanent. It was something that you couldn't undo, but that's different now. So um, let's cover layers. We'll move this over. Select this one. And let me go across and show you all the different components to it. Now you can see that they have provided some images on separate layers that are turned off. And we can turn them on and we can turn them off by just clicking the little eye icon. That's pretty straightforward, okay? Then if we look at the top, we can look at all the layers by kind. Okay. We can look at them by name, by effect. If I do that, we don't see anything because we haven't applied any effects yet. By mode, they all, they're all used in the normal mode, so it doesn't really matter. Um, attribute, color, you can organize them and view them in a variety of different ways. For our purposes, pretty much you'll always keep it on kind. There are some people that work in Photoshop that have, you know, over a hundred layers. So it's easier for them to keep track of all of that by changing the kind. When you select a specific layer, notice that nothing else is available to it because it hasn't been turned on. But if I select the pineapple layer, for example, because it is visible, I can switch from normal, and these are different modes that we can work with. And as I scroll through these, you can see what effect it's having on these. Sometimes nothing, sometimes they look kind of weird. Difference is almost like you're looking at a negative, things like that. How do you know how it's going to affect it? Um, or what the final um, image is going to look like? You generally don't. You just kind of scroll through these until you find what you're looking for. And we will be changing the mode of this later on. You can adjust the opacity of a layer from here, which is really, really important. You can lock layers from here. You can lock the transparency. Um, you can lock the, the painting or the, the lock the pixel images. 
You can lock the movement. You can lock, um, prevent any, any kind of auto nesting, or you can just lock the whole thing from here and you can unlock it from here. The fill is sort of similar to opacity. I never ever use it. I don't know why they continue to have it. Um, Cause if you wanted something that was a partial fill then you could do that, well, I don't know. I've just never used it. But that was if you wanted to fill something 50% instead of 100%, you could do that. Um, we don't use that pretty much anymore. If you want to change the name of a layer, you can do that. I just um, double click on the text and it becomes editable. If you wanna move a layer up and down in the stack, you can do that, you can move it manually. So I can click on, in, on the layer itself and I can drag it so now that it is above the pineapple layer. Um, you can't tell yet because we really haven't done anything. If you wanna move it up above or below, you can use keystrokes as well. So if I hold down the command key or the control key on the PC and I hit the left bracket key, which is the key immediately to the right of the P key, it goes down and notice that it can't go down below a background layer. If I want it to go up, I hit the right bracket key and it moves it up. Okay. So those are two different ways of moving layers up and down. Then with a specific layer selected, we have these options down here. We can link layers together. For example, if I wanted the background layer linked with the back or the pineapple layer, linked with the background layer, I could hold down the shift key, select them both, and now I can go ahead and link or lock them together. So that if I moved one, both would move. If I scaled one, they would both scale. And if you want to unlink them, you just simply click the link button again and it unlinks them. To select a layer, you just, you just click on it, select multiple layers. If I wanted to select all of them, um, select one at the end, hold down the shift key, and then click that one. Now they're all selected. If I wanted to select every other one, then you could click on one and hold down the command or control key. And now I could select those. And the same is, holds true if you want to deselect. Hold down the command or control key, and that will enable you to, to, to select or deselect them individually. Next to that is the effects layer. So if I select the layer, I can now add an effect. And we can select blending options. We can select bevel and emboss, strokes, um, inner outer glows, drop shadows, all sorts of things. And we're gonna use some of those in this lesson. Um, clipping masks, these we use all the time, or we call them layer masks. Those are used a lot. If you wanna add an adjustment layer, um, from here, you can. They've built in redundancy, redundancy because adjustment layers are now up here to the right. So I rarely kind of use the adjustment layers from here anymore. If you get so many layers that you want to, that it becomes kind of overwhelming and you want to group them together, you can create a folder. And that will enable you to, you know, drag these into the folder. Notice how it insets it, and I could take this one and I could put it inside the folder too. Now they're both in there. When I close the folder, it just tidies up my um, layers panel a little bit. That's all that's for. Um, I typically use that for, um, if I have extras that I just wanna hide for the time being, or if I want to isolate groups um, if I have a, a whole slew of text layers that maybe I want to put in a group and certain images and another group, again, to help tidy it up, that's all it's for. If you want to create a new layer, you can click on this button right here, right next to that. And if you want to delete a layer, you can do that. You can click and drag or just click on it right here and it removes that. Another way to duplicate a layer would be to click on it and drag it onto the new layer button. And likewise, if you want to get rid of a layer, you click and drag it onto the, the trash can. And it is a permanent um, addition or reduction, but um, 
you remember, you can always hit Command Z and bring them back. So that's where we're at with that for the, for the moment, okay? So the first thing that they want us to do, and again, I work a little bit differently than they do, is that we have a blank background layer. So there's really nothing on here. And if I turn that off, it's just white, nothing else, okay? But what I prefer to do is just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of it and it turns it into a transparent layer. So Command J, that's one way to make a copy of it. So there's our background copy and I can turn that off. Okie doke. So the first thing that we want to do is we're gonna make sure that we have the background layer and the pineapple layer um, turned on. So what I wanna do, and you'll notice that if I wanna move any of these layers, that's another thing. Um, renaming and copying layers, I just talked about that. I'm kind of going over the textbook to make sure that I'm covering everything here. Um, pardon me, I should probably just do it without looking at the book. That would probably be better. When I talked about rearranging layers, that's all good. Turning them on, turning them off. Um, duplicating, changing, blending modes, we'll cover all of that. So let's, um, we have some other files that we need to use in here, aside from the pineapple and the, um, the flower and things like that, that if I look over here, we can see that we have a beach scene. Now, if I want to add this to my, to my final document over here, there's a couple of ways that I can do that. And probably, you know, what I can do because I have both of these visible side by side, um, I could just click and drag it over. So I can click on here and I can drag it over, but it might be easier if I move up here. When that highlights, I can drag it down and there it is. Now notice it's behind the pineapple because I wasn't paying attention to what layer it was on. So I need to click and drag and move it up. I want it below the, the flower, but I want it above the pineapple. So now what I'm free to do is to resize it and to rotate it. And we're gonna make some changes to it. So to resize it, we've already used this tool. I'm gonna to hit Command T to, um, to come up free, to bring up free transform. Now you need to be careful because notice how I can distort that. Really what I prefer doing is I prefer holding down the option key and the shift key and it will resize it from the center inward and it will constrain the proportions. So it's a good idea to make it um, a little bit smaller here from the center, and then go outside the corner, and then I can rotate it a little bit like so, and then move it up. So there we have that. And we're gonna come back in a minute and we're gonna um, add a border to it. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and fix it. And let's add a layer effect to it. If I need to move it, I can always move it. If I need to resize it, I can always do that just a little bit. So let me um, zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. So what I want to do to this is I want to add a layer effect and that would be a stroke. So I'm going to make sure that white is my foreground color because that's the color that we're going to add. Then under the effects down here, I want to add a stroke to this. <coughs> And you'll see that actually by selecting my foreground color, it really didn't matter because we have a color that's selected from here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select white from here. And now we can control the size of it. Um, I don't know what size they want, but a three point rule looks fine. The next step is do you want it on the inside, outside or centered? Um, for our purposes, for this postcard, it really doesn't matter, okay? You want the blending mode normal, or do you want it something different? When we get to blending modes, you'll see what I mean. You can change the opacity of it from here as well. And again, all of this is, is editable. So as soon as I click OK, it's not a permanent change. All I have to do in the layers panel is double click on that effect, and it brings that dialog box back up. Okie doke. So the next thing that I want to do so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to 
um, create a few more things in here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add to the background. Okay. Let's work from the background forward now. So what I want to do now is I'm going to add, you'll notice in the finished version, we have, um, let's go back over here. We have the, these clouds. So what I'm going to do with that selected, just to be sort of a, sort of a cheater way of working here, but I'm going to use the eyedropper tool and I'm going to click this blue color in here. So I get a nice blue for the clouds. That's the color that I want for the background. And actually, it probably should be the background. So let's see what I, if I've done this right here. I'm going to come back here now. And I don't need that. I need the move tool. And what I want to do here is, and this background copy, is that I want to, I'm going to use um, something called, it's a, a filter up here. And it's going to be, um, where are we here? I need it to be, I can never find these things. I want it to be render and I want to render clouds. When I do that, you'll notice that it's going black. So I did it the wrong way. I wanted the blue to be in the background. So I'm going to undo it. I'm going to flip. So that blue is in the background and now let's try this again. Let's go back to filter. And let's go back down here to um, render and let's select clouds. And no, it's doing it again. So let me undo that. Let's go back to here. I'm going to click on the black here and I want to make that white and make sure that that is white. Now let's try it again. So back to filter. Let's go back to render. Let's try clouds. There we go. So it's taking from the foreground and the background and it's um, applying the color. Now that's sort of light. Now if I want, I can go back to filter again and I can select clouds again and notice that I get a different pattern every time I do that. And that's looking pretty good. If I want the color to be a little bit darker, I can always double click in here. And we can make it a little bit darker, a little bit like so. Now let's go back to filter Let's apply clouds again, and it's a little bit darker. And when you get a pattern that you're happy with, you're good to go. Okay, so now, again, not damaging our background layer, but on a brand new layer, we've applied um, the clouds effect. The, the clouds effect rendered looks pretty good in some circumstances. In this case, it looks really nice. It looks pretty natural. Um, in many instances, though, if you're going to have um, nice fluffy clouds in the background, it doesn't do such a hot job. You're probably going to want to go and find a photograph somewhere with the kind of clouds that you're looking for and drag those in as a separate image. But in this case, just to show you, it's on a separate layer. We can continue to render it. We can turn it off. We can do it again. It's totally up to you. Next thing that we're going to do is that what we want to enhance the, um, the pineapple a little bit. It's a nice looking pineapple. It's nice and crisp and clean and clear and, and sharp focus and all that good stuff. But we want to make it look um, a little bit brighter and more intense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the layer and I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Command J. I really haven't done anything to that yet. I mean, if I turn that layer off, I have the same thing underneath. It's perfectly matched. But if I come here, and this is a good time to introduce modes here. And if I look at overlay, notice how intense it is. So we could use overlay or I could use soft light. They're very similar to one another. I'm going to use overlay. If I already use multiply, look at how dark it appears. And so depending on the effect that you're going for, you can select each of these modes and change them. And again, they're, they are non-destructive. They're not a, a permanent change. You can always change it back to normal. So I'm going to use overlay. That's a nice. And you can see if I turn that layer off, the original pineapple looks sort of washed out. 
and it looks just sort of okay, you know. But when I have duplicated it and I've added another mode to the layer on top of it, it looks much richer and much brighter. So that looks pretty good. Now, one of the other things that we should probably start on now, is let's, let's work on the flower right here in the upper right hand corner. So let's look at the flower that they've done here. And we can see, if I look at the flower, you can see that they've done two things. They've added two effects in here. They've added the satin effect. So if I double click on that, you can see that that comes up. And we have a blending mode of multiply added. And it's a nice hot pink that they've added in here. Um, the opacity that they've um, kind of dialed it back to only 20%. Um, if it were much higher, it would be a much harsher effect. And you can change the angle and the contour and all that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and do that to ours. Um, let's go ahead and add the, um, the shadow, drop shadow. Make sure that I have the right layer selected, the correct one here. So here's our flower. And I'm going to go ahead down here. I'm going to go to effects. And let's add the drop shadow. So I'm going to add down here, drop shadow. Now what we have to do is we have to adjust, you know, the angle. We have to adjust the distance of this. And again, any layer beneath it will be affected. We can adjust the opacity of it, like so. And I'm going to approximate it to what the book has here. And we can adjust the spread. So if we want it a little bit softer, a little bit harder, um, we can see that like so. And the size, and that will also soften it just a little bit. So that's looking pretty good. Um, again, notice that the drop shadow affects the, um, the beach photograph beneath it. Now, drop shadows can be easily overused, but they are a very powerful effect, especially when used with type to help you see type and enhance the readability of it on very complex background layers and that sort of thing. Well, I have this here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the satin. So I'm going to go ahead and click on satin. You can see the default color is this you know, black. Well, I want to switch and I'm going to use kind of like a pink. And again, is it the pink that they've used in the book? I don't know. I don't think so. But it's close enough for our purposes just to show you that we can add it and it enhances a, a photograph or a color or an image. It's already pretty good. Let's dial this back to maybe 20% about what they had. So it's just a little subtle enhancement of color. And we can change the angle of it a little bit like they did. Actually, they used, yeah, that's about right. So, and if I'm happy with it and it looks fine for our purposes, I'll click OK. So now we've enhanced the, the photograph and we've enhanced the flower and we're able to um, make adjustments to that. We've added clouds, we've duplicated the pineapple, and we've created a nice effect for that. Okay. So some of the other things that we need to add now, let's go ahead and let's turn postage on just for the heck of it. And using the move tool, whoops, see, I got the wrong layer selected. So I gotta be careful, make sure that the postage layer is selected, whoops. There we go. Gotta make sure that you click on the postage, there we go. So I'm gonna move it over here like so. And I guess I could change the size of it. Let's see what they've done over here. It's more important that I change the opacity of it. So let's go ahead and change that. Because looking at it in the harsh black and white is a little bit too much. So I can go ahead and we can dial this back a little bit. Like so. And that looks much better. It's a nice subtle effect. It looks nice. It looks pretty good. So, you know, I'm making mine close to 50%. Okay. So we now we turned on one of their layers and we've also affected opacity. So that's one of the things that we can do. The other thing that we want to do too now is we're going to turn on the word Hawaii and we're going to affect it. Now what they have done here is this is non-editable text. They have um, 
rasterized text, but what they want us to do to it, which is still pretty nice, so we can't edit it, but we could do this if it were editable text, is that we want to apply a gradient to it and we want to apply a layer effect that um, affects the outline of it. So let's go ahead and let's, you know, how the, the first thing that, that you should ask yourself is how do you select, because if I were to apply, let me do this. If I were to apply a gradient to this now, this whole layer, I can come over here and underneath the fill bucket, I can select the gradient tool. And at the moment we have, um, let's look at some of the basics here. We want to go from, we have, white to transparent is what we want. Um, let's, let's go back in here for a minute. Um, let's try that. Um, actually, let's go black to, to, to white, black to white. Let's try that. Now, if I come over here and I click and I drag like so, notice that it fills the whole layer. I don't want that. I only want it to fill within the text itself. So how do I isolate just the text? Well, that's where selections come into play. So do I use any of these? I don't have to, which is really kind of cool. Because what you can do is that if you hold down the command or control key and you click on the icon, notice that it, it, it notices on that layer <clears throat> to outline with a little marching ants just those, those areas there. So now what I can do is I can click in here and I want, um, let's see, I want to create my own color in here. So I'm going to click in here and I want to create um, an orange. I want an orange, a nice bright orange in here. And that looks good. And we can go from orange to white. Okay. So that's what we have, orange to white. And now what I can do is I want the orange to go from bottom to top. So I click here and I drag and if I want it perfectly vertical, I hold down the shift key and then pull it up like so and release. And that's it. If you, if you want to try it again, you can always undo. If you want it to go from side to side, then you would click and drag like so. And now the gradient goes from left to right or it can go from left, right to left or whatever I want. So again, to to get the marching ants to select just that, hold down the command or control key, click on the icon, to get the marching ants to come up. And then to use the gradient tool, um, you need to select the colors that you want. And they don't have to be from black to white, but that's what the lesson, or, or um, from orange to white, but um, that's what the lesson wants. You can have multiple colors as far as I'm concerned. We can click and drag and I hold down the shift key to constrain. If I need it to go a little bit further, I can click and drag and pull it up a little bit more. You know, every time I do that, it goes a little bit higher. There we go. So that looks pretty good. Maybe you dial it back just a little bit. Okay, so I've got that. So now I can deselect, but now I want to outline the text. So now we use a tool that was very similar to what, it's not similar, it's the same tool that we used to outline the, the photograph in here. So what we're gonna do is with the layer selected and in Hawaii, I'm gonna go to effects and I want to use um, a stroke. And now we're gonna pick a nice green because that's the color that they want here. I'm gonna click a green. So let's go into our green section here, a nice intense kind of Kelly green, maybe a little bit darker. That looks pretty good. That's close enough, I think. And now what we can do, as you can see, in outline mode, do I want it on the inside? It depends, um, you know, do you want it centered? Do you want it on, and it, this would make a huge difference. If you want it on the outside, notice how the, the letter forms look like they're almost touching. And you can, from here, you can change the, the thickness of it. Like so, okay, so maybe a four point would be good. And if you want it a little bit darker, you can always come back in here and we can click it so it's a little bit darker. Not quite so dark. There we go. And there you have it. So there we have 
we've added a gradient and we've added an outline to this all. You notice that we're adding, oops, sorry about that. We're having lots and lots of uh, layers that we're adding here and lots of adjustment layers and things that we can do to change, to move things around. But one of the last things that they want us to do, there's a couple of things. Um, let me go ahead and move this over here. Is that we need to add some type and we need to bring in another image from over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring the flower in. Here's that flower. They've already isolated it for us. So what we want to do is similar to what I had done before um, with the photograph. I'm going to select it and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it on top of the tab. And as soon as that tab for our start file is highlighted, I'm going to drag it down like so. And there it is. But now notice that the last layer that I had selected um, was the Hawaii layer. So I need to move this down. I want it to be, you know, maybe just below above the pineapple, um, but I need it below everything else. So what I need to do now is I'm going to go ahead and move this over a little bit so I can see a little bit better because I need to shrink the size of the flower. So Command T and hold down the shift key to make sure it's a little bit smaller, like so. There we go. So that's in the right order. That looks pretty good. And now I can fix it by clicking return key or I can select the checkbox here. And one more thing that they need us to add here. They've already added it in here. And to be perfectly Anna, it's, it's, Honest, I've forgotten what they want us to do. Now they wanted us to add it a little bit differently than I did. They wanted us to drag it directly in from our um, uh, our um, our file, and you can do that. So let me let me go back up a little bit. So let's turn this off, just for the heck of it. And I need to go. And I need to look on my layers here, my um, folder, my desktop. So here are my lessons in here. And I'm going to move this up. You can't see what I'm doing. But I'm moving this over just a little bit so I can see. And let's look at lesson four. And I'm looking on here. Here's a beach. Here's the flower two. And I can just simply click and drag it directly into here. And it will add it. And there we go. So I added it into our, uh, our file here directly. So you can do it either way. You can open it first and then move it in as I did, or we can move it down like so. And then we have it in position. You go ahead and select check, you know, check box or hit the return key and we're good to go. Okie doke. So the next thing that they wanted us to do with that, and I need to, let's see. That looks pretty good. I thought there was a, another layer effect that they wanted. But did that bring it in? As, yeah, that brought it in by that way as a smart object. And that's, that is sort of a smart way to go. That's not a bad way to go. So we can leave that there. Okay. So smart objects, um, allow you to adjust them and the size a little bit better than if you were to just do it the other way that I did it. So that's kind of cool. So the last thing that we need to do, let me come back over here for a minute because I want to make my um, photograph here a little bit larger. So again, notice that mine is named layer one. I'm going to double click on it and I'll name it um, photo. So you can always add, um, you know, label layers later, later, or if you wish, if you have just a handful of images like we have, and you can see the, the thumbnail of them pretty clearly. It's, um, you know, not hard to, to figure out what you need to do, um, which one, but later on, when you get a whole, slew of layers that you're not sure of, then it might be important to start labeling them 
you know, so you can tell, especially when they're little tiny snippets of an image. The last thing that we want to do, you know, we're, I'm going to make sure that I have, it's above, um, where am I going to put it? I'll put it um, just below the Hawaii layer, but I'll make it um, above the flower layer. And again, as long as it's above the, the flower and it's above the pineapple and sort of thing, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use text. Now, to do that, let me go ahead and again, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to come over here. And I want to Uh, I'll need to select the end file. And I want to stretch this over back over a little bit so I can see. So I'm going to select the text tool and I'm going to click in here and this should be editable text. You can see that they have used Birch standard regular 32 point. But there's a few other things that we're going to do to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here to my file and you can notice, you'll notice that it's already selected the type that I want. I'm going to use it from centered and I'm going to click down here. Actually, it really doesn't matter where I click, but I'm going to click here. Okay, and I need to type in here. Let's see. Let's click on the type tool. There we go. Let's see why it's not showing up here. I want to type in island. Nope, wrong file. See, I still have the old file selected. I need to select this one. There we go. So make sure that this one is selected. And I need, guess I need to check that. Undo. There we go. Now come back here. And now I got to make sure that my file is selected, select the type tool. Now I can click again. There we go. I want it to be centered. I don't want Lorem Ipsum. I want Island, all caps. So I'll put on caps lock. <clears throat> Island, paradise. Okay. Let's use the move tool and move it in place. Now, some of the things that they have done <clears throat> and here that we haven't, that I've kind of overlooked. But when I select the editable text, and that's really very important that you feel comfortable doing this so that you can add this to your, <clears throat> your postcard assignment, is that I'm going to go to window up here, and I'm going to bring up character. So I need to move this over a little bit. Let's move this over a little bit. And you can see that they've changed here the tracking to 250. Well, if I click on the left here and I change that, notice how it's really dense. And if I click and I drag and I move it to the right, I can increase the width of it uniformly so that it fits. And it, um, it's the same width as the word Hawaii above it. Okay. So, I have it set to 290. Let's go back to 250, what they have. And that looks pretty good. If I want to change the color of it, you know, maybe my green doesn't match. But if I click the green in here, now I selected white. I got to come back in here. Um, let me select again. No, I want that green. So let's pick a green from in here. That's too dark. Let's go back to where we had. I'm just going to cancel so that it goes back to the color that we had. But I should be able to pick a green from inside here. So let me zoom in a little bit and that should work. Let me click again. And let's click right on here. There we go. To make sure that it matches the same color that we have in our um, outline. And now I can fix it by clicking the checkbox and zoom out a little bit. And again, by using the move tool, we can move this wherever we like. And you just have to make sure that it's on the correct layer. Because if I accidentally move it below, for example, the pineapple, notice that it's hidden. Okay, 
So there is, you know, very often if you, you know, as I'm talking here and I'm, if I'm not paying attention and the wrong layer is selected, I can accidentally put it below and I don't want to do that. So we're going to add a couple of more um, effects to this. We're going to add a drop shadow as they have done. And we're going to add bevel and emboss. So we'll come back in here. Let's um, start by adding the drop shadow and that will help define it. Notice that it goes back to the last settings that we used. So I don't need the size to be quite so great. I don't need the spread to be quite so great. So that can be dialed way back. I don't need the distance to be quite so great. Let's go ahead and change the size a little bit until we get something that resembles what they have here. Now it looks pretty good. Check the angle of it and we're set to go. So the other thing that we want to add though is bevel and emboss and that will make it look a little bit more 3D. So I'm going to click OK, but I do want to zoom in a little bit so you can really get a sense of what this looks like. Okay, now this applies to the whole layer when you do this, not just the text. So because the text is isolated, it applies it to the whole layer. So let's go back in here and let's double click on and bevel and emboss. And we can come back here <clears throat> and we can use inner bevel. We can use outer bevel and notice how they all change a little bit. You can use pillow emboss and that's kind of cool. It has, that can be a nice effect sometimes. That's not what we're going for here, but I really kind of like that as an effect. Um, let's go back to um, inner bevel. And now let's adjust the size of it, um, you know, make it not quite so because of the text is pretty small. Maybe three pixels is all we need. <clears throat> and I really don't need to soften it any. Okay. And we can use multiply and screen for the, the colors that we're using for the, the colors of the shadow side. But it has, it gives it dimension and that can be a nice effect too. And again, it's also an effect they can be easily overused, but again, it's an effect because it is an adjustment layer, one that can be applied <clears throat> and then edited or turned off. Um, and that's what's nice about, one of the things that's nice about Photoshop is that if whatever layers you have turned on, those will be the layers that print. Whatever layers you have turned off, those, are la those layers won't print. So it's very um, easy for you to go back in. And if you have multiple versions, they can be contained within the same file. You just turn layers on and off. So within the same document, that might be a reason for duplicating folders. And then within that, you could have one, two, three different versions that you turn, you know, depending on which layers you turn on and off, um, you could have multiple versions contained within the same file which could be very efficient, um, you know, if you're working for yourself or a client and you want to um, determine what works best for them or for yourself and you haven't made up your mind yet. So um, there is a question here, right? It wasn't paying attention and let's take a look here. Um, is there an alternative font that we can use if you don't have, ver yeah, sure. If you want to use a different font that fits, um, be my guest. Yeah. But if you open up, um, yeah, any one will be fine. You know, try to pick one that's that, like they have that really fits in there nicely. If you haven't had a, a graphic design class or a typography class, um, the, the font that they have chosen really works nicely because it is condensed and it's nice and tall. And it works nicely under the word Hawaii from a design perspective. It's a good choice. So um, you don't have that much space. You don't have that many words, but it reads really, really well. A sans serif typeface would work equally well, but because it is serif, it complements the sans serif Hawaii nicely. So it all works pretty well. And if you use the same green, that you've used for the outline for um, the word Hawaii, then they all kind of work together nicely as a, as a unit. Okay, so there you have it. Um, what am I doing on time? It didn't take me that long. Um, 
maybe 45 minutes today to do this. I, there might be one more thing. They want us to, to make the, the flower in the lower left-hand corner look a little bit more pinkish. So look at the text, and there is something that I've done or haven't done, they have done, probably under a layer effect or um, a filter that I can't remember at the moment that would be worthwhile for you to do, um, just to get the hang of it. So, um, yeah, that's it. Um, got most of it there for you. Sort of going in the same order that they have, but not quite. Getting everything done, you know, likewise. So that's pretty much it for today. This um, Wednesday, I will cover lesson six and then get you started with your first assignment, which is to create a postcard. That postcard will be able to be black and white or can be color. It can be serious, it can be fanciful, you know, it can be humorous. Um, it can be, you know, anything you want. It can be a collage, photo montage, sort of what we've done here. It can look realistic if you wish. Try to integrate all of those elements together into one unit. That's really the hardest one and most challenging of all of the options. So that is all, and there's many more things that we can do with layers, but that covers a good, good part of it. Um, if there aren't any more questions, um, then let me um, pause. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause the, the recording and I'm going to finish taking roll. Uh, another question here, or is it no? Oh, you already did pick a. Oh, for the assignment. Can you pick any subject? Yeah, absolutely. And I only have one that's on my website and that's it. And we'll talk about that more on Wednesday. Um, you know, one example, but no, you can pretty much, um, any subject, it's open to any, any subject that you want. You know, I could, you know, wish you were there. And it could be kind of a ironic, uh, satirical, approach it can be serious it could be you know it can look retro it can look futuristic it can look whatever you want it's up to you uh, where's the free transform tool um, first you have to select the layer that you want to transform and then you go to edit and it's right here free transform it's easier i think if you remember command t Sometimes um, I will forget exactly wh where they're located, but I remember the, the key command. Um, and other times I forget the key command, but I remember where they are. But command T you're gonna use a lot for free transform, a lot, a lot. Does that help? Okie doke. So let me go ahead and pause. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. I'm going to come back and I'm going to finish taking roll, see who's here. We have quite a few people attending today. Um, I think most of you got my uh, email saying that too few people were attending the Tuesday, Thursday one. So I'm discontinuing it. But if any of you need additional help or want guidance or want feedback or whatever, then let me know and we can probably set something up for same day, Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday in the afternoons um, to have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, Zoom meeting, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pause.